hasn't been particularly exciting lately. Most days I wake up, sit at my desk, head to the gym, and then do it all over again. The same song playing on repeat. I live in one of the greatest cities in the world, yet most days I find it difficult to leave the house. I tell myself I'm too tired, it's cold, maybe tomorrow. I feel like a lot of us are used to talking about social anxiety as a joke, but lately it stopped feeling like one. All right, we're done. We did it. First therapy session, finally done. I think it went well. I mean, it was mostly just me talking a lot. I guess it was more of like an intake session just to kind of understand the stuff that I wanted to work on and my feelings about those things. But I like the therapist, she's really nice. And I think we're gonna be meeting weekly. And for now, I think I am going to finish editing a video and then gonna get cleaning on the apartment because there's a lot of crap everywhere and I haven't vacuumed in like three weeks. So I think we're gonna get some spring cleaning done. I don't know where to start. I found that photo in the sofa And it's from way back in the one So I guess there's much I never told you Like who I am, who I love The moments I do see my friends, I feel happy. There's a genuine joy and sense of connection that I haven't felt much of in the last two years. But then there's always the aftermath, when the high wears off and I come home to my apartment only to remember how I started oversharing or talking too much about myself, or how maybe that joke I made that was meant to be sarcastic might not have been taken that way. Did I say something mean? Desperate? Annoying? I feel like I did something wrong. I should probably text them to make sure. No, that would seem too clingy. I should just accept that this is probably the end of our friendship and I'm just an unlikable loser who's going to be alone forever. It's so easy for our minds to play tricks on us. returned from Brooklyn. Albie and I are very tired. It's been a very long day, it's 8 p.m. But I'm about to put the groceries away, set up my new flowers for spring, and then I'm gonna make us some curry udon, which I've never done before, so we'll see how that goes. I also bought these winter frost pine berries. The lady, Trader Trader Joe's. <laughs> the lady at Trader Joe's checking us out went on a very long rant about how she hates these so much. They don't check eggs. Yeah, and then the other mm -hmm. lady was very adamant about how she never checks eggs. Well, I'm not going to check the eggs. These are your eggs, right? I'm not going to check my own eggs. Right? You gotta check but not my eggs. They're your eggs. Why am I going to check your eggs? Yeah, I don't tell you to check my eggs. I check my own eggs. I wonder if these are actually... I think they said they were a blend of pineapple and strawberry, but I feel like what they meant to say is that the flavor is a blend. You know what I mean? Not actually a hybrid. It was fun. I mean, it tastes good. Time to get to cooking. I know how privileged this sounds, but part of me feels almost nostalgic for the beginning of the pandemic. When we all still believed that this was just going to be a short vacation from our real lives, a quick intermission before getting on with the rest of the show. When everyone stopped worrying if the rest of the world was living better, happier, fuller lives because we were all forced to stay home and turn our attention to sourdough starters and TikTok dances. When the rest of the world was in chaos, I felt at peace. Good morning. I'm so tired today. I don't know what happened. I thought I got good rest. My Apple Watch told me I got good rest, but 
I'm just not really feeling it. It's Monday. Usually I'm ready to go and smash my Monday workout and get started on my task for the week, but I think today is just gonna be a chill day. You know, we were out in New Jersey all day yesterday. I didn't get home until pretty late. So I think this is gonna be my pseudo Sunday get myself together day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Me too. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't run away. I have a question for you. Where's the oat milk? Oh, it's in the fridge. Where? In the box. What is it? I couldn't find it. That's almond milk. Oh, is it? Oh, did I buy almond milk? Oh. I told you. No, I totally. It was in the grocery cart. I said, why are you getting almond milk? You oh. said, I got oat milk. Then I said, you only got chocolate oat milk. Then you said, no, I also got regular oat milk. And I trusted Change it you. Up. Change it up. I trusted you. Change it up. I trusted you. Change it up. I'm expecting $6.80 to be transferred directly to my bank account because I had to go buy this instead of making it myself. I said, do you want a cookie? Uh, yes, please. Well, too bad. Cookies are only for people who keep their word. Now, after two long, unexpected years of disappointments and uncertainty, the world is slowly returning to how it was. Days in the office, trips abroad, putting on our best outfits for a night out with friends. We're finally, finally out of the house, and my first instinct is to run back in and hide. It's like the world is moving on while I'm still stuck in limbo. Other people are like a mirror. They show you when you're pretty enough, smart enough, funny enough, likable enough. That's why I feel peace when I'm alone, when there's no one to judge me, but me. I'm gonna be making okonomiyaki for the first time today. I've never done this before, so see how this goes, but I have the dough resting in the fridge right now. I just made it a little while ago, and I'm gonna start prepping some of the other ingredients. If you don't know, okonomiyaki is a batter mixed with some cabbage and some egg and some pickled ginger. And then I'm gonna have some pork on the bottom, mix in some scallops, mix in some calamari, which is defrosting, some rice cakes, and some green onion, and maybe some sliced garlic if I don't get too lazy. from the yam. Yeah. It's supposed to be normal, and not everyone gets it. going to the city because I live in New York and I'm supposed to do that so I think I will try and hit up the public library I want to see the Rose reading room if it's open I've never studied there studied yeah. worked there before and then maybe head up a pastry shop get some coffee I don't know I think we're just gonna have a little adventure day 
I thought that turning off my social media, staying inside, and altogether opting out of this pseudo-competition with others was the solution, but it's not. If anything, it's made my anxiety worse, because my imagination is so much more insidious than what people are actually doing. That's when I realized that avoiding others, deleting your Instagram, or even just trying your best to keep up won't really address the root of the problem. The problem isn't that the world is moving again and that I'm staying still. The problem is thinking that there's something wrong with stillness in the first place. The problem is that I came out on the other side of this pandemic a different person. And the problem is that I am still not perfect. I don't fit perfectly into the world like a puzzle piece. In fact, no one does, no matter how hard they try to pretend otherwise. There will always be people who don't accept me, parties I didn't attend, lives I didn't live because I was too busy living the one I'm currently in. It's not the fear of missing out on an event, it's the fear of missing out on the ideal version of myself I thought I could be. I'm out of the train station, <laughs> finally, after like half an hour, but not really sure what to do now because I don't really know which track share 14th Street, so I might have to walk to get home, but it's very cold now. Probably gonna take like half an hour, so. Oh no, we'll see. I thought that when the world stopped, I finally had permission to be myself, to explore what I wanted, not what the world wanted for me. But you know what? I still have the permission to be myself. Just because others are going one way doesn't mean I have to follow. Self-acceptance and self-love are some of the hardest and most difficult skills we will ever have to master. And most people never get there. But if I keep working on it, I think it will all be worth it one day. So I had my second therapy appointment and I started crying. I know everyone always says I cry and I didn't think I was gonna cry, but I did. I wanted to talk to her today about some like insecurity and self-esteem issues I've been having lately. I think they've always been there, but recently I think it's gotten a lot worse, especially with the pandemic phasing out a little bit and people going back to their normal lives. But I feel like I've always had a problem with needing to meet certain expectations or very high expectations that I set for myself and feeling like I I not need to compete with friends but need to reach their standard. Um, a lot of the choices that I make in my life are very unique to me. I don't do things that are considered part of like the common path or trajectory a lot of the times and because I don't get a lot of external validation for that I think it can make me a little bit insecure about my choices and make me doubt myself a lot. And she asked me what would happen if, you know, I failed any of these expectations. Um, if I wasn't as social, if I gained a little weight, if I didn't work at a prestigious company, you know, like why do these things cause so much fear and anxiety in me? And this is where I started crying. I, I think a big part of it is that I'm scared that people are gonna leave me if I don't live up to this perfect standard. Abandonment issues, woo! No, but I think that was pretty good progress for a second session. I guess we'll have to wait till next week to see how that goes. Might be more tears on the way, who knows. Grew up on 913 and Blue Rock Memories